They were running for their lives. Frantically trying to keep their families together amid the mayhem and gunfire, desperately handing over their toddlers to soldiers and strangers, scrambling to get away from the firing and shelling even as they fled. Many have spent days under fire, trapped in their homes until they realized it was run or die, with the Russians getting closer. The stream of people fleeing are traumatized, but many are also angry and full of despair. Putin's a war criminal, she says, the Antichrist. You've been waiting for him, now you've got him. Families have been torn apart in the chaos. They ran into Irpin from a village outside before escaping Irpin too, and they've left elderly relatives behind. All, all houses are in fire, and that's all that they can see. How much destruction is there that you can see in the in the town centre? I think all all destroyed. There is nothing to help. Uh, there is nothing to build or defend. There is nothing. I came here and I left my parents to die, she tells us. And I told my husband, you've got to go back and bring them here because I can't just leave them to die. But in amongst this suffering and trauma, there are small glimpses of hope. Her 81-year-old mother and father are found. And the family is reunited. How could I live without you, she says. There is incredible heartache and fear, but also an astonishing defiance about these people. Alex Crawford, Sky News in Irpin. That was Alex Crawford reporting from Irpin, a small town northwest of Kyiv, where Ukrainian families have been fleeing amid heavy Russian shelling. Those families, if they are lucky, will join the war, uh, more than 1.7 million refugees, mostly women and children, who have fled Ukraine since Russia began its invasion 12 days ago. All this migration in less than two weeks makes this the fastest growing refugee crisis in Europe since World War II, according to the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. And with Russia potentially targeting more population centers across the country. Millions more Ukrainian refugees will likely flee and need some place to stay. Refugees like this 11-year-old Ukrainian boy named Hassan, who arrived at the Slovakian border alone this weekend. He traveled about 600 miles by himself with only a backpack, a plastic bag, his passport, and more importantly, a phone number written on the back of his hand. The Slovakian Ministry of the Interior says that volunteers were able to use that phone number to reach the boy's relatives who arrived to pick him up. Today, Hassan met with the Interior Minister of Slovakia, who says the young boy has already sought temporary protection in the country. Slovakian officials called him a hero for making that long journey. And there are millions more like him trying to make their trek to safety, too. Meanwhile, here near Hungary's border with Ukraine, we're also seeing an influx of refugees. I got a chance to speak with some of them and with their uh, humanitarians who are coming to their aid. Here, smoke rises from chimneys that were new a century ago. The tiny village of Tichebek, Hungary, sits just across the river from a now war-torn Ukraine. But as refugees pour out of these buses, it might as well be a world apart. I feel that I don't have a home because uh, some, uh, somebody uh, think that uh, they just can take our country. It's not normal. We need to do something. I really wanted to stay in Ukraine. I love Ukraine. It's my home. But <laughs> I can't. A home both unsafe and for now unreachable. Friends Svetlana Paolo and Oilina Hradik met in Kyiv. Oilina hails from the Donbass region. No stranger to fighting, but fighting that hadn't touched her home until two weeks ago. My uh, part of Donbass, uh, it's Ukraine. But now, uh, Russian um, military, military uh, come to my home. And now, I don't know what happened to to what will happen with my mom, with my grandma, with my uh, two grandma tomorrow, today, right now. I don't know because um, sh they you can't, don't, uh, don't I was have. Say, you, uh, can't call, you can't call them. Yeah, because uh, don't have uh, yeah. internet, internet, light, uh, all. She shares a story with nearly every person stepping off these buses. 
The faces are mostly women and children. The men had to stay and take up arms in Ukraine. A corner of this quiet village now bustles with activity to show the refugees they are welcome here. Hungary hasn't been so friendly recently to outsiders, but not this time. A pop-up barbecue stand here to wave a friendly hello. And some of these helpers arrived only to realize they needed to stay. They showed me pictures about, about uh, their city and about their street. They don't have house anymore. It, it has been bombed. Gabor Prokai came to drop off supplies from another distant village. He stayed for nine days. You can't prepare yourself for this. You can't. You won't solve everything and uh, every people's life, but uh, you have to do one day four or five tasks, which is done. And if it's okay, then your soul, your soul may be, will be okay. Most of the people with whom we spoke plan to go someplace else in Europe. None plan to stay. There is only one place they want to be. Do you want to go home? Yeah, of course. I want to see my family. It's my family. We're going now to the Budapest, and uh, then we will make our cat's passport, and then we will get to the airport, I don't know, maybe tomorrow or in two days, three days, I don't know. Do you believe that you can go home? Of course. I believe it. Of course, I believe it. A young Ukrainian refugee keeping hope alive that she will one day be able to return to her home. We'll be right back.